As the black population was beginning to be assimilated into the rapidly industrializing economy, a question quickly began to emerge. What role would the African American workforce play in the labor movement during the mid 20th century? There were opportunities to both utilize or exploit black labor, but the question of loyalty prevented both the black worker and the unionizers from assimilating. Black workers were torn between the employers who graciously provided the black communities with work and their fellow workers, most of whom denied them union membership. But despite the obstacles of socioeconomic barriers, glass ceilings, and the systematic exploitation of labor, small successes in working hours, wages, and representation were made by those such as Philip Randolph, creator of the Brotherhood of Sleeping Car Porters in 1925. This progress, however, took time. It is important to understand that the intent behind the exclusion of African American workers from labor unions and white capitalism was more than mere racial prejudice and stereotyping. Sterling Sparrow and Abram L. A. Harris, scholars and labor activists in the early 1900s, argue that excluding the African American laborers eliminates an entire class of potential competition from a particular craft. Early labor movement uh, lived by the slightly misguided theory that the smaller the competitive pool is, the more valuable the service becomes. However, by excluding the black workers, the employers have a steady supply of cheap, strike-breaking workers, and this merely continues the destructive image of blacks as scabbers for uh, working for wealthy employers. When union organizers refuse to unite the workers, even those such as writer Frederick Douglass, the original proponent of unity between African American and white workers, came out in favor of blacks taking white jobs. Colored men can feel under no obligation to hold out in a strike with the whites, as the latter have never recognized them. In his article, Literary Depictions of African American Strike Breakers, Mark Noon analyzes the depiction of black laborers in fictional literature. Touching on Upton Sinclair's The Jungle, Noon highlights a group of strike breakers that the protagonist is in charge of, particularly the African Americans, whom Sinclair portrays as lazy, incompetent, and threatening. Although our own protagonist, the unnamed narrator, is not confronted for being lazy or incompetent, his interaction with the Liberty Pay unionizers in Chapter 10 illuminated the class struggle between the black and white working class. As some of you brothers have learned to the sorrow of your wives and babies, a fink don't have to know about trade unionism to be a fink. Finkism? Hell, I've made a study of finkism. Finkism is, finkism is born into some guys. It's born into some guys just like a good eye for color is born into other guys. That's right, that's the honest scientific truth. A fink don't even have to have a herd of union before, he cried in a frenzy of words. All you have to do is bring him around the neighborhood of a union, and the next thing you know, why zip, he's finking his finking ass off. Our narrator is accused of finkism, likely a made up word, but it represents the illusion of dishonesty painted around the black workers and their loyalty to the white employer. It divides the blacks from the white unions. To paraphrase Howard Harris, in some situations, fear over losing jobs in a scarce market will lead to organized workers turning their backs on fellow wage earners. This rejection contributed to the formation of local unions organized on ethnic or racial bias. The reorganization due to distrust is eerily similar to the blindness that is symbolized in The Invisible Man of seeing only the environment and the projection of your own prejudices. Although the issues exploiting the working class are less regulated by unions today and more by the government, it can be said that the same factors restrict progress and cooperation, blindness of the individual, and the standard of success being measured by a single demographic. The willingness to step across the barrier of distrust, black to white, democrat to republican, Accurate representation is a matter of collaborative perspective, but that can only be done 
through dismissal of meaningless differences, and rather the acceptance of new points of view.